Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, William Lease, your number one source for data storytelling, data journalism, and sports betting. And today I'm finally continuing the Creating a Sports Betting Model 201 series. Uh, we're starting section two today. So within section two, there are five individual parts. And this video is going to be talking about data cleaning. Now, data cleaning is something that's very important when you're using anything related to data because 99% of the time, the raw data you get, it's going to have some errors. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be unclean. So you need to clean the data. The main, like I said, the main thing you're looking for when you're cleaning data is errors. You're looking for missing data or data that's wrong, data that's uh, incorrect, that type of stuff. And it can be hard uh, with data sets that are so big to go through all that data, which is why there's a lot of different ways that you can examine data to ensure that there's a, so for example, R and Python both have commands in-house that you can use to load the data table and examine it to uh, one popular way is to check what the minimum and maximum values are. Um, there's also uh, flags on commands like str or summary in R that will show if there's data missing and how many rows there are missing data for. You can check the quintiles. What are the quintiles? What's the mean? What's the median? What's the mode? There's a bunch of different ways you can check your columns to ensure that the data is accurate. For example, in college football, the data source I use, collegefootballdata.com, there is so much wrong with the raw data that it was like you had to create a bunch of patchwork to make it usable. And even then, there was just not enough time in the day to cover all the errors. But one example was that there is games involving San Jose State that the home team and away team was backward, which was important because the way you got the information out into to use was to determine, okay, who's the home team, who's the away team, and that's going to determine the yard line and yards to goal, yards to go, and everything like that. So if the home team and away team was flipped, then that means the amount of yards to the end zone was going to be flipped as well. So any games involving San Jose State, I had to write code to fix that within the elements. So that's just an example. But always assume that the data you get raw is not going to be 100% perfect, and it's going to take some cleaning, some adjustments. For example, if you're scraping data from HTML, you're going to have a lot of HTML code that you're going to have to process and put into a CSV file or data table. And that's where knowing how to scrape and knowing how to operate R or Python when it comes to data structuring and data cleaning is very important. This video could also be called data structuring because ultimately you need to get the data into a usable structure, a CSV file. That's my preferred way to go CSV files, but there's other ways to do it. But you got to get into a clean, nice, tidy, organized structure. Another principle that you guys should look up is tidy data and tidy data principles because tidy data is a, a general set of accepted principles used to structure data. The idea being off the top of my head is I want to say it's um, every column is a variable every row is an observation and every cell is a single valuable. So your data is going to have variables, observations, and values. So tidy data is just a way to structure data to make it easily usable, readable, graphable, uh, parsable, anything you want to do with it. Because the worst thing you can do is have such a crappy data structure that it's really hard to parse, really hard to present. Uh, one of the most common examples of poorly structured data is just, it's just too wide. The data set is too wide. But you don't want it to be too tall either. It's about finding the middle ground and that's where tidy data principles can help you out when it comes to structuring and cleaning data like some some examples of things you can do always for always make sure your column headers are names not values Another thing you're going to have to do is impute missing values because even the best data sets, for example, in MLB StatCast data, if you want to use pitch by pitch data, I don't, but they have a lot of missing pitches in there, like in terms of pitch speed, pitch type. So imputing missing values is also very important. You want to do it right. And there's a lot of different ways you can do it. And every case is going to be different. So you have to take it on a case by case basis. Some people will just use the average or the median. Some people use the mode. Some people just remove the data row with missing missing data altogether, which you might want to do if there's enough of a sample to where that one observation really won't matter. But that's also something you're going to have to do. 
But I will say this, for some sports, it's not possible to have a 100% perfect data set. You're gonna have to make the best with what you have because like I said in the past videos, data is very hard to get and any data you can get at all, especially if it's free, is probably going to have problems. So you have to make the best of what you have. Sometimes you're just gonna have to make uh, lemons out of lemonade, so to speak or lemonade, lemonade out of lemons, so to speak, and do the best you can. And it's not possible. Like the college football data I used this past season for my model, there's so much missing data, so many things wrong, so many errors, and it was like a house of cards almost. And it was like that scene of Vegas vacation where Clark Griswold's trying to plug the wall of the Hoover Dam, and every time he plugs one leak, another one springs. That's what it's like with a lot of these free data sources, and even paid data sources out there can have issues. But just do the best with what you can, Structure your data in a clean, nice, efficient way that makes it easy to parse and do the, your, your best to impute missing values and you should be able to go a long way. Um, like I said, the more data you have, the more you're going to have to clean, but make it presentable, make it readable. And in my opinion, one of the best things you can do is partition out the data in as many files as possible. Try to avoid having like one massive file and try to split the files up into as many files as possible. And you can always merge them together on the back end. That's the advice I have. But I hope you enjoyed this video about data cleaning. I know it's not very high level. I know a lot of you are going to be disappointed that I'm not showing you coding tutorials or actually how to write programming code to clean that data, but that's not what this video is going to be out. That inform If I was going to do that, it would be something I would charge money for. I'm not going to give stuff like that out for free. I charge a lot of money in my day job in terms of consulting fees per hour. I'm not going to give that data out for free. Be glad I'm doing this video at all, at all and don't complain. Anyway, the next video is going to be about data transformation. You'll probably get more information there. I think we'll go into a little bit more detail there. Data transformation. Don't miss it. Anyway, until next time, this is me, William Lease, signing off.